Hello and welcome to um, episode 3 of Ra from Me Car. Um, this episode is a little bit different in fact, I'm not in my car at all. Um, I, this is Ra from Me Living Room. Um, I've been blessed with the fact that my missus is at her mum's. So I, I can do whatever I fucking, you know, fucking want man. I, you know, if I want to get crazy and take off my shirt, or, well, to be fair, I can take off my shirt. <laughs> when my missus is here, she fucking loves it. Gets her all hot and excited. Um, I'll get a bit closer, just because, again, I don't know what the sound levels are like with this, so you must have it loud. But yeah, I've been on my own for a few days in the old flat. And, uh, I just thought it would be very, very stupid for me not to take advantage of this, like I said. I, 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 if I wanted to, I could make Ra from your car from the flat when my missus is here, but I, 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 I must admit, I have a little bit of self-consciousness that I can't really properly vent myself when there's someone else around. Um, so that that's the reason when I said before, like I don't really have the, the resources to do this at home. Well, yeah, I do. I, you know, I'm my own man. I can, I can do whatever the fuck I want, man. But uh, I, 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 I don't seem to, I can do it, but for whatever reason I notice it, I don't seem to vent the same way that I do when I'm completely on my own, so that's the reason. But anyway, and the other reason I wanted to do, I don't know if you could see my hair, I mean, I, have, I didn't have a shower last night. That's, then that's the kind of rebel lifestyle I've been leading since my missus has been away. And I actually think I look a little bit like, Nick Grimshaw, you know, the popular uh, Radio 1 DJ. Well, I say popular. <laughs> he's not popular at all, but he's, he's pretty high up, so I don't know how the hell he got that. Isn't it weird? Like, you got, like, not Chris Tarrant, I'm thinking. Oh, Chris Tarrant, if anything. I think most people think, I don't really like him, but, you know, he's all right. He's intelligent, isn't he, really? Who's the fat one I'm thinking of? Well, you all know, the one before Nick Grimshaw, the fat one. He's not very funny, but thought he was. But, yeah. They, uh, and then you got Nick Grimshaw. None of them are very popular, but they seem to be. And then you got, like, Greg James and all the rest of them. But anyway, I got my hair like Nick Grimshaw today, so that's going to get me loads of followers. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was Sundays. And... What I really don't like is if you're a working man or woman like myself, you basically work five days and then you get two days off. Which I don't think, first of all, I don't think that's it should at least be a four day on, three day off week. But, but you know, unless you've got a bank holiday or whatever, that, that doesn't seem to be the case. But still, you could still think, I'll finish Friday, and I'll get my two days off, and you think, I'll finish Friday, and I haven't got to, uh, Saturday morning, I haven't got to get up, Sunday morning, still haven't got to get up, Monday morning, it's back to work, but you know, I've had, you know, two and a half days off, or whatever, two and a quarter, but it doesn't work like that, and I don't know if it's anyone else who feels like this, or if it's just me, but I only really feel like I get one day off, because... Sunday, I don't get any enjoyment out of Sunday unless I wake up and literally just start fucking drinking as many fucking pints as I can and just get as pissed as possible from the moment to get up. Um, or get fucked off my head on ketamine or something, which I, I don't do anymore, unfortunately, because I, I, I gave it up. Just because it's too bloody good. Um... The second Sunday hits, I can already feel that fucker of Monday morning, like, at me. So, as far as I can say, I only, unless I, like, book Monday off or Friday off, and then you shunt it all forward or, or whatever. It's horrible. I don't, like, it's Sunday today, and this is what I'm on about. I'm already thinking, like, I'm in trouble, like, I'm going to oversleep tomorrow. It's just fucking horrible. I hate it. So, I don't know if anyone... But... I don't know whether that's just me as a person, and I'm just deranged. Because I seem to chat to loads of people who, they're Facebooking and they're like, Oh, loving me Sunday afternoon down the pub. Such a great life. And everything. And it's just, well, 
Yeah, we know it's not though, is it? Because, yeah, enjoy your fucking pint down the pub, but just you wait till your alarm goes off tomorrow morning at seven and he's back to another five days. I forgot what the camera's. Five days of fucking doing something you don't want to do. So it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a struggle. And I, I, I don't... And I will go back to, I'll go back to something which I was just talking about ketamine. And I, I will openly say I, I, I am, <clears throat> will be a ketamine um, addict till I die. Which is quite strange really because I would say if anything, the one thing I really have a problem with is alcohol. And the main reason I have a problem with, I mean I've got some here, um, which I've got left over from last night. Um, and I'm doing a lot better, to be honest. Um, the main reason is that's 8% wine. And I, again, I will probably do a whole bloody show about this. But I, I don't agree with 8% wine. I think I was tripped. I, I'm 8 9% lager or whatever, that, that's fine. But wine should be like 12% minimum or something. So, uh, it, I, I mean, I haven't even had a sip of this. Not, not this morning anyway, so I don't know what it's like. I mean, it's all right. Not really, yeah. But you'd think that the, the I mean, well, I do. I have more of a problem with alcohol than I do with ketamine because there's two reasons for that. Um, the one reason is alcohol you can get from any shop if I ever want to cave it, and, and the price as well. You know, if I want to buy like three liters of white cider it's like three pounds i can always scrape to get in i earn like 20 grand a year i can scrape together three pounds um and i can pop up the shop and i can come back with a fucking huge bottle of fucking 7.5 percent and i can get as pissed as anything it's so ready valuable and it's so cheap and i think that that is the problem um ketamine on the other hand i mean i think how many times have I done it? I mean, I, I was a, a massive ketamine addict for about five, six years. Talking about 2007 till 2013. Well, 2012 maybe. I mean, I pretty much gave up ketamine when I met Vicky. Like about a week before. And, I, you know, I've done little bits of it here and there. But not, you know, not to the level. Um, it's all been very controlled, I've, I've said to Vic. I've bought a couple of grams, let's do it together, or this is just it. And then for months on end after that, I won't do it. Whereas before, when I was what I would call, you know, I was a proper ketamine fiend. I would literally, it would just be four or five grams a week, every week, for as long as I can remember. Um, and the reason that I, I love ketamine so much, or loved ketamine, well, loves ketamine, yeah, loves ketamine so much, even though I've made a choice to not do it anymore, is just because it's fucking amazing. Basically, ketamine is what people who haven't done drugs, that point when you're just drifting off asleep and your brain just does a bit of, like, you're not quite sure whether you're on the couch or you're not on the couch and you just you think about really crazy shit and it's really nice. That's basically what ketamine is, but just for, for the prolonged period. And it's lovely, and it makes time, see, it makes, but what I would say is, imagine Lord of the Rings, the film, or, or any of the three films, or anything like that. For me, it, like, ketamine takes whatever you're doing in life, and makes it epic. I could be sitting, I, I, I've sat on the sofa watching Forrest Gump with my mates, and we've been sniffing ketamine, and... After about two hours into it, where he's running along, and he, he said, and then this is what... Oh, and now it appears like I'm rambling and I'm jumping back and forth between different things. But that's, that's what life will... That's how my mind is. This is how I have to... I'm 30 years old. That's how my mind has been for 30 years. So everyone, sometimes when I'm like scatting back and forth between various subjects and topics, and people like to say to me, you know, focus on one thing. I'm, you know, you're stressing me out with all your back and forth. And I'm like, well, that's what my fucking mind is like forever. But it would be, we'd be watching Forrest Gump and sniffing K and then we would get to the end and I'm quite an emotional person and he'd be running past this lake 
And he just, and bear in mind, he's not just running past the lake telling his story. He's running past the lake telling his story to his mom. I can't remember if he's telling it to his mom who's dying or whether he's telling it to Jenny. He's telling it to one of the two. I think he's telling it to Jenny, actually, who's also dying. Um, and it just goes to show, doesn't it? And he, he's running past this lake and he says, there was times where what I saw where life was so beautiful, I couldn't tell where the earth stopped and heaven began. And when he says that, there's this beautiful scene of this lake, and it's one of those where, where the, you can see the mountain and the blue sky and everything, which is really there. But then there's a lake underneath it, and then it's just like a flip side mirror of the mountain and the lake. And you, you can't tell where it stops and heaven begins. And I may be a bit of a soppy fucker, but it's, it's things like that that, that that really connect with me. And even if there is no heaven, there is no God, and there is no spiritualness, and everything is just matter and geology and, and pointlessness, as Richard Dawkins, who I do like to watch a lot of, even though I don't agree with that, so I still find it interesting. Uh, Christopher Hitchens. If that really is the case, then maybe I'm just a fantasist, and I, I need to to believe in stuff like that because otherwise I just find it too hard. Um. So yeah, I'm going to um cut there, not because I've got any reason to cut, just because I found there's a lot of load in these videos. People got a short, myself included short attention span and it's better to just keep it in, in segments so uh, see you in a sec